What to do if the police stop your car? Imagine you're driving down the road, you've done nothing wrong, and all of a sudden you see lights behind you. Police officer here in my rear view mirror. I have no idea what fork. What do you do? What do you say? How do you act? So what's the first thing you do when you see a copper? You start recording and your hands, look at my hands. I put my, my elbow right on that knob. You see that? And now I got my phone and I'm recording inward right here. I'm recording myself. And then of course, when the camera shoots across my face and goes out the window, it's hitting the cop. Laminate a copy of your driver's license front and back, your insurance and registration card, put it on a laminated slip and it goes inside your trifold above your visor. Use the touchdown position. Hand goes on the seat over here as you film. This hand goes up grabs the trifold, your driver's license, registration, proof of insurance. You Everything that you do with the cop, you show the camera first. Cop pulls you over, license, registration. I'm already like this, I'm already filming the copper. Always want that camera on yourself, so if anything happens to you, we can see you get hit. We wanna make sure that you're in the camera. So you film like this, you hold your hands up in the touchdown position. Then when you copper pulls you over, reach up, grab your trifold, your laminated driver's license, proof of registration, insurance, right there, cop says, hey, can I get your driver's license, registration, proof of insurance? You pull it down and you hand it to him. Brothers, give him your license, your registration, and your proof of insurance. How you doing? License, registration, and proof of insurance, please. There it is. Now he has my license, registration, proof of insurance. He says, hey, where are you going? Where are you going? Perfect. Now you grab your trifold out the top, you point at the trifold where it says, I plead the Fifth Amendment. You show it to the cop and you say, I plead the Fifth Amendment, officer. I invoke my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. He's gonna ask me if I know why he pulled me over to try to get me into an argument so that he can pull me out of the car and put me in torture cops and torture me and take me to the dungeon. His goal is to take me and kidnap me and put me in jail and take my car and take my money. Where are you, where are you heading? Officer, I just I just showed you on the trifold. I plead the fifth. Please don't ask me any more questions. If I violated a code, then give me a ticket. I want to leave. Thank you for your time. Okay. Well, it's uh, it's fine, ma'am. You're not in trouble. There's no. You're, where are you going? I invoke my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. I do not care why that cop is pulling me over. What does it matter to you? What he's gonna lie about? Anything I say to this guy, he'll use against me. If I answer one question, <laughs> he's gonna ask me another and another, and you know he's gonna say I'm arguing and pull me out of the car. On that app, does it show you the direction that you just? It traveled? don't matter. I don't have to answer any questions. I gave you all my my paperwork, my ins like, my information. I'm you don't. No, nah, but you acting like I'm so committing a crime. It's I'm not being a listen. crime up here. I'm you coming up here to see my brother. I'm, I'm not being argumentative. Why are you asking cops why they pulled you over? Why do you care why he pulled you over? He's gonna ask you, do you know why I pulled you over? That's his way of starting an argument with you. I've invoked my Fifth Amendment right. I showed it to the camera. This footage is gonna go to the judge when I sue you. Stop harassing me. I've already invoked my Fifth Amendment right. I have a right to counsel. The cops don't just get to assume they have a right to search your vehicle. So here's revoke consent right here. In the 2018 case of United States versus Williams, he asks you if he can search your car and you're gonna tell him, sure. You're gonna say, yeah, you can search my car. Now it's very important that when you tell him you can search your car, that he says, okay, can you step out of the car so I can search it? You say, sure, officer. And you step out of the car and the moment he starts to search your car, you say out loud, officer, I revoke consent. I revoke consent. If I can give consent, then I can revoke consent. And that's the 2018 case of the United States versus Williams. What am I gonna ask you? Can I search your car? If you give me the right to search your car, I'm gonna search your car. If you revoke consent using the 2018 case of the United States versus Williams, I have to stop, especially if it's on camera. So I want you to say, officer, I revoke consent and they kind of stop searching your car. You, United States versus Williams, 2018. Tell them right now, I revoke consent, stop searching my car, say it out loud and they have to stop immediately. Say it now. I revoke consent. Consent. Stop searching my car. That's it. Rubio, that's it. He's revoked consent. He's revoked consent. I revoke consent, I'm searching my car. That's it. Okay, cool. Cops says, can I search your car? Sure you can search my car, go ahead. He starts to search it. I revoke consent.
The U.S. Supreme Court in Florida versus Himeno held that the scope of a suspect's consent to a search under the Fourth Amendment is that of objective reasonableness. This was explored in the context of revoking consent in the case United States versus McWeeny. In McWeeny, a Las Vegas Metro police officer asked the two occupants of a vehicle if the occupants were in possession of anything that they were not supposed to have. The occupants said no, and the officer then asked if they minded if he looked in the car. The occupants orally consented to the officer's request. After backup arrived, the officer had the occupants exit their vehicle and face the officer's patrol car, which prevented them from observing the search. During the search, at least one of the occupants tried to turn around to watch, but a backup officer prevented them from doing so. During the search, the initial officer found a firearm in the trunk of the car, which resulted in the arrest of McWeeny for being a felon in possession of a firearm. The Ninth Circuit held that the officer's decision to prevent the occupants from watching the search impermissibly limited their ability to revoke consent, and that the officer's decision to restrict their ability to watch could be unconstitutionally coercive. If an officer is conducting a search based upon consent, the consenting person can withdraw that consent at any time. Additionally, the officer trying to operate under the rules of consent can't be unduly coercive. Here in the Ninth Circuit, courts would take a dim view of officers limiting the ability to revoke consent by placing a suspect out of earshot and could also have a problem if the suspect is placed in a patrol car while the ability to observe the search is necessarily limited. Whether a suspect was coerced into believing that they had no authority or ability to withdraw their consent is a question of fact, and a court would need to determine if the officers created a setting in which a reasonable person would believe that he or she had no authority to limit or withdraw their consent. This includes taking into account all of the circumstances surrounding the encounter, including whether a reasonable person would feel free to decline the officer's requests or otherwise terminate the encounter. All of that said, even if officers inform a suspect that they can yell out of an open window if they want to withdraw the consent to a search, this may not survive scrutiny, particularly in the Ninth Circuit, as a person in the back of a patrol car may reasonably believe that they are not free to decline the officer's request, or that they were being otherwise coerced to allow a search to occur. Now, so let's say for example though, he gets you out of the car and he's gonna search your car using the exigent circumstances clause of the 1925 case of Carroll versus United States. Automobile searches are one of the recognized exceptions to the warrant requirement. The Carroll Doctrine, named for the Supreme Court's decision in Carroll versus United States 1925, holds that law enforcement can search an automobile without a warrant when they have probable cause to believe the vehicle contains evidence of a crime and when securing a warrant is impractical. So if they don't have a search warrant, then they're going to have to see something, maybe drugs in plain view. They're going to have to see something else that's there that will give them the independent probable cause to be able to search your vehicle. Any contraband that they also see falls under the plain view exception to the warrant requirement. Law enforcement officers do not need warrants to seize evidence of a criminal activity in plain view if they are legitimately in the locations from which the evidence can be viewed. It's on my trifold, United States versus Williams, I revoke consent. There's not enough drug dogs to get there in time or they violate Rodriguez versus United States 2015. They'll say, okay, well, they don't have any probable cause. So what, they, what do they do? They call for a drug dog. But what if it takes the drug dog three or four hours to show up because the drug dog's not available? Well, now there's Supreme Court law out there that says that is too long of a time. And as a result of that, even if they bring a drug dog out there and find something, because the client did not consent to the search, the entire search is thrown out. And you tell them, you're welcome to call a drug dog and get a drug dog out here, but not at my expense. You are not allowed to extend the stop. The 2015 case of Rodriguez versus United States is specifically about cops extending the stop for drug dogs. So you tell him, you've told him out loud, I revoke consent, stop searching my car. He says, I'm just going to call a drug dog. You say then you're violating my constitutional right to travel and that's a first amendment violation. And I'll be filing a lawsuit against you for violating my civil rights. You're combining the United States versus Williams versus Rodriguez versus United States of 2018. You're combining those two different cases so that you 
aren't going to get hemmed up because just so you know, so if you've done it properly, you've invoked Williams and you've invoked Rodriguez and you did it properly, then it becomes fruit of the poisonous tree. The 1961 case of Matt versus Ohio that says that anything that cops find if they illegally search you or your car or your house is inadmissible in a court of law. So I'm combining Williams with Rodriguez to create this impenetrable force around myself that if they do search me, it's all on camera. Anything they find is inadmissible in court of law. Now, outside of finding a dead body in your car, you're gonna beat that case. You should beat that case. You use that trifold like it's a piano that you're playing. It'll keep you safe from the piggies. You got to get used to this. You got to get used to mincing the words you use properly because they're trying to mince words with you to arrest you, steal your car, kidnap you, and put you in a frickin' dungeon. I wish that wasn't true. I wish this wasn't my business. I really wish that I had no trifold business where I didn't sell a trifold to make a living because so many people didn't have to worry about their rights being violated. But that's not the case. That's not the case. LMPD followed Tayan Lee from a gas station, pulled the teen driver from his car and handcuffed him on the side of the road for a drug search with a canine for more than 20 minutes. This was all after the 18 year old driver made a wide right turn. Officers found nothing illegal and the citation for that turn was dismissed. City leaders say it showed police bias at its worst. Today, a federal judge found the prolonged stop violated Lee's rights. He was wrongfully detained without cause. The case will now move to a trial to determine damages, how much the city will have to pay. If you answer one question, where are you going? I'm going to my mom's house. Where are you coming from? You writing a book? You wanna be my boyfriend? What, what, what are you talking about? Why are you asking me all these questions? We're not dating, bro. <laughs> I'm straight. Sorry, homie. Don't ask me where I'm going. It says on the trifold, I do not agree to in answer any questions. Don't ask me where I'm going. Don't ask me where I'm coming from. Use your trifold. Use it. I sell it for nine bucks. You can download it. Then you have a copy. You can give it to all your friends. Or if you don't have nine dollars, I'll give it to you for free. Get my trifold. Get it in your car. If you don't have one, I'll give you one for free. If you can't afford nine bucks, if you no problem. If you can afford the $30 one, get it. Put it in your car. It's badass. Keep it. Use your damn trifold. By the way, when you get the $30 indestructible one, I give you a nice thick, it, it's actually a broccoli wad. You know, the broccoli wad uh, rubber bands, a nice thick black rubber band, because I really want you to put the, the trifold up on your visor, just like that. Put that around your visor, your trifold. How many people don't have their license registration proof of insurance? I do a photocopy of my driver's license. I do a laser copy of the front of my driver's license and the back of my driver's license because I'm not gonna put my actual driver's license in a, in a plastic laminated fold. So what I do is I do a laser copy of the front and the back, and then I do a laser copy of my registration proof of insurance, and then I put them on one long plastic card that kind of mimics the same size as my trifold. And then my registration insurance and proof ID all goes in here. And then when the cop pulls me over, I use this touchdown position. That's why I give you guys the rubber band with your order. It's a small little thing, but I don't want you trying to find the right rubber band. I sell you a nice thick black broccoli wad rubber band that goes right inside of your, right there. What's wrong with having the necessary tools above your head, putting your hands above the steering wheel so you don't get shot? There are rules. I know it doesn't seem like it, but there are. So that's the most important thing. Set yourself up for success. You're going to get pulled over. Cops are targeting people when you travel. When you travel from point A to point B, cops are targeting you. This is all I do. I don't do anything else. This is all I work on. This is it. Trying to figure out ways to make sure you can get around the prison state, police state, death state. That's what I'm trying to help you do. Go to my website, deletelaws.com. Everybody get over to my website, deletelaws.com. Delete laws with a Z. Get yourself an indestructible trifold for $30 or get the or digital trifold and always invoke your rights. Sometimes you have to give away your rights by allowing them to search for five seconds and then revoke the right to search. I retain my rights back. So I want to give you guys the best tools I can possibly give you. The best tools I can possibly give you. And that's what I do with this trifold. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later, Gators.